Bye! Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the Zelda Dungeon video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. First question comes from Justin Nickerson. How many bottles would you like to have in Skyward Sword? How many bottles? Bottles! BOTTLES! Oron asks, if Link wasn't in The Legend of Zelda, do you think the game would still be good? Um, yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, uh, you know, Link's always been the main character, but it's not exactly been that he's been important as the main character. Um, the game wouldn't really change if they changed the main character, and the Zelda games would basically be what they are now. The point is, is that Link was created to be a link between the game world and the player, hence the name. Uh, he wasn't originally supposed to be a character, but he didn't end up becoming one. Um, but it's still not, he hasn't become one enough that it's important to keep him as Link. Now, I do believe there would be fan backlash, and maybe rightfully so, if they removed Link. But, you know, in the Legend of Zelda DX, uh, basically you could choose Link or two generic male and fe female heroes. So basically, um, that's already been something that's been done. In fact, a customizable character, maybe still resembling Link, might actually be a good idea. But, of course, there'd be the fan backlash, so maybe still give the option of being Link or whatever. I think that's a worthwhile idea, actually. Uh, but that's one thing I'd like to hear you what you guys think. What do you think about replacing Link or having Link as an option or not having Link at all? What whatever. I just, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Uh, Cardboard38 asks, What is your opinion of being able to control characters other than Link like you could in Majora's Mask and the Wind Waker? Did you like it, and do you think it should be done in future games? Well... The thing is, is it was kind of cool. Uh, in Majora's Mask, when you briefly controlled Cafe, it was interesting, you know, because you were controlling someone else, but there wasn't really anything to it, so I'm not sure that really mattered. It was just a moment where you could control someone else. Why not? You know, just throw that in, but it doesn't make any difference to the gameplay one way or another. Uh, as for controlling the Wind Waker characters, that's more like a partner setup, and that same can be said for Spirit Tracks with Zelda, or uh, that one dungeon in Phantom Hourglass where you controlled the little Goron kid, uh, Gongoron, I believe. And uh, basically, that is something that I think is actually worth doing in the future. In fact, I kind of wish Spirit Tracks did more of it. I'd like to see something similar to Spirit Tracks, perhaps, but with more partner characters. I'd actually like to see a whole game based on partner characters, because that was a very interesting tactical uh, element to the game, and I loved it. Especially if you could implement an actual co-op mode, that would actually really expand the uh, way people can play the game, and it would be amazing. In fact, and if they put in multiplayer modes like uh, the Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks battle modes combined with such a system, uh, things would get pretty cool pretty fast. I'm a pretty big fan of the co-op character, whether or not another per player actually controls them. Um... Metal Yoshi asks, You mentioned in the last mailbag that the Sheikah not being in Twilight Princess, but that they were made specifically for Ocarina of Time. This is incorrect. Impuz, Impuz was in fact a Sheikah, although it wasn't a, outrightly mentioned. In light of this, how do you think Nintendo will continue the trend of using the Sheikah in Skyward Sword and other future Zelda games? Well, you're right. I guess you're right there. I made a mistake in that case. But, um, thing is, is Impuz in, uh, in Twilight Princess was a bit of an odd occurrence in that, um, yeah, like you said, they didn't outrightly state it, but the fact is, Twilight Princess in a lot of ways played off Ocarina of Time. In fact, it was almost fan servicey towards that game making references. No other game except the one title that was a fan service homage to Ocarina of Time in a lot of ways has ever mentioned the Sheikah in a, in a major way. Uh, they've had, like, tiny references, like Wind Waker has several insta instances of the Sheikah symbol. And there's other characters throughout the series who resemble Sheikah. Now, other than that, Twilight Princess is the only example, and it's a bit of an odd one. Uh, granted, you have a point. Uh, Twilight Princess referenced some important lore with the Sheikah, so it's very possible that we will actually see it again. I guess I should uh, take back my word on that a bit. I do, however, think that Sheikah were mainly made as an Ocarina of Time thing, and that's pretty much been withstood in the series. It's been made references to, as every element pretty much is, but, you know, it's still basically the Sheikah were Ocarina of Time's thing. Um, Skyward Sword, it could make references to the founding of the Hylian royal family, and as I've said before, if that's true, the Sheikah could be a part of that, but they also might completely predate the Sheikah. We kind of will have to see. I'm of the opinion more now than before that it's possible, though. Uh, Doblin asks, do you think that in Ocarina of Time you'll be able to skip the cutscenes? Uh, that was a feature in Twilight Princess and in the DS games. 
and it's become almost a standard among the uh, modern Zelda games. I do believe that with Ocarina of Time 3D, they may actually make some changes to include some of these now new standards with the series. So yes, I believe you will be able to skip cutscenes. I don't think there's any reason they would admit that, now that that's become standard. And I also think that Ocarina of Time 3D might make a trend of uh, other elements that have become standard in the series. Like, I think they might throw in one of those endurance dungeon type things, like the Cave of Ordeals, the uh, Savage Labyrinth, or, you know, the Take Em All on Challenge. I think we might see something like that. I think the changes to Ocarina of Time 3D are going to be minimal in that we're going to see polishing of what we've had and some extras thrown in, but the main game will be mostly untouched, just polished. Uh, Black Cat 23 asks, In Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, when you open a save file, there are white numbers next to hearts and under the name. Do you know what they are? Uh, yeah, those are in a, the same feature is in a lot of Zelda games, quite a few actually, um, poss possibly almost all of them. And basically, it's your death count. When you reach the game over screen uh, after dying, it doesn't count if you like to use a fairy or whatever, because that's not really dying, that's uh, being revived and continuing playing. It's when you fully die and get the game over then you go to, it adds to your death count. And uh, yeah, that's basically what it does. It's just a way to keep track of your deaths. If you reload, it might not count, but I'm not sure on that one. Um, it depends on how the detection on it is, and basically, yeah. Uh, Blizzard78 asks, In The Wind Waker, Link's grandma mentions that Link becomes the same age as the hero spoken of in the legends, also meaning the hero of time. So since Link becomes 12 in the game, would that make Link in Ocarina of Time 12, and when he pulls the Master Sword, 19? Well, yes, because it is definitely referring to the Hero of Time. That's an interesting point. Uh, I don't believe that the adult, adult Link was necessarily 19. That seems a little old to me. One thing to keep in mind is actually that the entire uh, backstory of the Wind Waker in reference to Ocarina of Time is a legend. Remember in the game that the Triforce was referred to as the Triumph Forks. And that was actually pretty funny. And uh, basically, the whole game, you were hearing legends and accounts of the stuff about Hyrule. The only times that you had solid information was straight from the King of Red Lions or Ganondorf's mouth. Other than that, most of it's just interpretation and there could be things lost. Uh, there's realistically no way they could actually know the age of Link, the Hero of Time. So, that's kind of ambiguous, and I don't think you should go with that, necessarily. Um, Camden Lawrence asks, In Skyward Sword, how do the controls work exactly? I.e., how do you dash, backflip in battle, roll, etc.? Well, uh, obviously we don't have the game yet, so I can't tell you for certain, but uh, one thing that we can pretty much guarantee on is the few things that they've shown us, in that you... Uh, you can control your sword by, you know, moving the Wiimote around, and it will aim the sword in the direction that you're aiming the Wiimote. And it will, if you slash, it'll slash, stuff like that. Uh, drawing your sword is probably pretty standard how it was before, just hit a button, or maybe you have to just move the Wiimote. Uh, you hold up your shield by holding up the nunchuck. And other than that, the fact that you're using the Wiimote and nunchuck will probably mean, and this is speculation, but it's, it's pretty much uh, obvious in my opinion, that it's going to be kind of like Mario Galaxy, in that it's basically the familiar control scheme of in that game. In that, in that game's case, it was Super Mario 64's controls, just with the Wii Mountain Nunchuck, because you basically have most of the same buttons. So I think that'll be kind of the case with uh, Skyward Sword. It'll be the familiar Ocarina of Time control scheme, just with the Wii Mote and the new Wii Motion Plus instead of the sword swinging. As for the dashing, you probably just hold a button, and yeah, probably the roll button or whatever. Unless that replaces rolling, in which case it's still the roll button. Yeah. Esther asks, I think it's almost certain that Ganondorf won't appear in Skyward Sword. So who do you think will be the main antagonist? Will we be seeing a female for a change, or will someone from the past titles return? And what kind of a bad guy do you wish to see in Skyward Sword? Well, I'm completely in agreement that Ganondorf will not appear in the game. There's basically no way he can in a logical method, and I discussed that Nintendo could throw him in if they wanted, but I don't really feel that they will, because that would be sort of a stupid move, in my, in my opinion, because they would have to force force it to put him in, and that would hurt the story overall. But, um, basically, I think villain-wise, I've talked about maybe Vati, but I'm actually not really, I don't believe that anymore. Uh, 
for the record, there have been female villains before. Uh, there was uh, Varen. And um, other than that, uh, some people believe Majura was female, although I don't believe so. I think, if anything, Majora was it rather than female, if he wasn't male. And uh, the thing is, we've actually also had a lot of creatures. Bellum, Majora, Nightmare. Uh, we've had several, a pretty diverse villain cast, and we have a bunch of males, one female, and a bunch of monsters. So, you know. But um, if they're going to have a bad guy, I mean, they're going to have a bad guy, of course. The bad guy I think we're going to see is actually the Dark Tribe. Uh, they've been referenced consistently throughout the series, and there have actually been a lot of connecting facts about them. Uh, you can check the Zelda Wiki about it, there's some interesting stuff there, but also I think that, uh, I think that, you know, with the nature of Skyward Sword, that it's going to be this thing that predates the entire series practically, except maybe Minish Cap. It will make sense to have a villain who's been behind the scenes the entire series because this will be back in time to where they might have had their basis or been more well known before they faded into secrecy. And that would explain the kind of idea of um, like the evil controlling the land below because these guys are like everywhere throughout the series so they're like really secretive secret society types. They could have had a lot of power before. So I think that's a logical thing to expect in Skyward Sword. Now I actually personally think that will be them but I'm not sure. Uh, I'll probably do some do more on that, like a video or so, or an article or something in the future, but yeah, that's I think it's going to be the Dark Tribe. Uh, Pablo asks, do you think Epona should make a reappearance? No, actually. I kind of think Epona holds back some of the classic exploration elements. In fact... Give me some boots and a map! And that's all I got to say on that one. Uh, check my first mailbag. I, I believe I discussed this before. Um, well, that's it for this time, guys. Be sure to send your questions to the email address in the description, and later.